Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. Today is Thursday, September 8th, 2016. And here's a quick look what's coming up. Tonight, while Obama scoffs at the idea of voter fraud, dismissing it as a conspiracy theory, the administration pushes its own conspiracy theory that Russia will tamper with our elections. The Secretary of Defense has threatened Russia to stay out of our elections, saying Putin has a clear ambition to erode the international order. And of course, Homeland Security's Jay Johnson has threatened to usurp control of our elections due to cyber vulnerability. Then. Was someone whispering sweet nothings in Hillary's ear last night? Okay. Actor James Woods has a viral tweet showing what looks like an inductive earpiece being worn by Hillary at last night's Commander-in-Chief Forum. And True Pundit says New York Police Department sources involved with the forum security detail confirmed she was wearing an inductive earpiece. All that and more on tonight's Enforce Nightly News. The Department of Homeland Security is threatening to take over the upcoming presidential election in the name of national security. Recently, DHS Secretary Jay Johnson told reporters that they are considering monitoring the election to ensure the integrity of the election. And this, of course, comes just weeks after Barack Hussein Obama criticized and even ridiculed Donald Trump for daring to cast his doubt on our nation's electoral process. And remember what Obama said, the federal government doesn't run the election process. I mean, you'd have to be a conspiracy theorist to believe that. The federal government doesn't run the election process. And I'm afraid the election's gonna be rigged, I have to be honest. Of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? What is election fraud? Ha ha, like it doesn't even exist. This is the complete arrogance of these people. Uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense. And I don't think anybody would take that seriously. So while Obama says that voter fraud is a conspiracy theory, the White House is pushing their own conspiracy theory, claiming that the Russians might get involved and steal the election for Donald Trump. And that, my friends, that is a perfect excuse to get the DHS involved and seize oversight of our elections. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton is taking all this nonsense even a step further, suggesting that the United States respond to any Russian cyber attacks with military force. You've seen reports. Russia's hacked into a lot of things. China's hacked into a lot of things. Russia even hacked into the Democratic National Committee. Maybe even some state election systems. As president, I will make it clear that the United States will treat cyber attacks just like any other attack. We will be ready with serious political, economic, and military responses. And I told you earlier that Jay Johnson, the DHS secretary, he says that there is a plan to assume direct control of the presidential election by declaring it critical infrastructure. By the way, this is the same guy who appeared on MSNBC and said that he believes Donald Trump's policies are irresponsible, unconstitutional, and even un-American. So talk about a conflict of interest. He's already picking sides. That's the guy they want as the gatekeeper of election integrity in America. Give me a break. Meanwhile, the New York Times is reporting just yesterday, in fact, at Oxford University, U.S. Defense Secretary Ashton Carter accused Russian President Vladimir Putin of demonstrating a clear ambition to erode international order. And he warned Russia to stay out of American elections. 
In one of the most blatant pieces of propaganda in U.S. history, the Washington Post wants to sell America on the idea that the upcoming rigged elections by Obama and the DHS will be blamed solely on Vladimir Putin. Of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? This is a kind of fundamental attack on the country itself, the underpinning of it, that somehow or another it's rigged or it, 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 it's not fair. People, you know, some people will believe that. The truth of that is, uh, Chuck, Chuck can attest to this too, by and large, American elections are pretty much on the up and up. The Washington Post writes, U.S. intelligence and law enforcement agencies are probing what they see as a broad, covert Russian operation in the United States to sow public distrust in the upcoming presidential election and in U.S. political institutions. The aim is to understand the scope and intent of the Russian campaign, which incorporates cyber tools to hack systems used in the political process, enhancing Russia's ability to spread disinformation. The effort to better understand Russia's covert influence operations is being spearheaded by James R. Clapper Jr., the director of national intelligence. This is something of concern for the DNI, said Charles Allen, a former longtime CIA officer who has been briefed on some of these issues. It is being addressed. The official cautioned that the intelligence community is not saying it has definitive proof of such tampering or any Russian plans to do so. But even the hint of something impacting the security of our election system would be of significant concern, the official said. It's the key to our democracy that people have confidence in the election system. Let me get this straight. The American people are to place the future of our country in the hands of National Intelligence Director James Clapper, the same man that blatantly misled the American people when he lied to Congress regarding the total dragnet our intelligence community wields on the supposed protections of of our Bill of Rights. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. Now, why do you say he was lying there? Because the letter that he sent to Congress admitted that they roam through the content of phone calls and the content of emails and the content of text messages without a warrant in direct contradiction to what he said to that uh, Senate committee. That I do think that when history looks at this, they're going to contrast the behavior of James Clapper, our national intelligence director, with Edward Snowden. Mr. Clapper lied in Congress in defiance of the law, in the name of security, Mr. Snowden told the truth in the name of privacy. And the DHS is going to overrule powers given to local and state governments to manage their own elections under Article 1, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution, not to mention the powers afforded states in the Tenth Amendment, simply because DHS claims to be able to provide ironclad cybersecurity? Thousands of DHS employees were subjected to, as WorldNet Daily recently reported, the theft of social security numbers, dates of birth, residencies, educational and employment employment histories, personal foreign travel histories, immediate families, business and personal acquaintance details, and other information used to conduct background clearances. A mountain of evidence containing decades of collusion between our government and an elitist banking cabal sits collecting dust. Meanwhile, the American people are supposed to believe with zero proof that a foreign government will hack our elections and that for the first time in U.S. history, the electoral process must be hijacked by a dictatorial administration hanging on to the last remnants of its power before they are shown the door. John Bound for Infowars.com. Infowars reporter Owen Schroyer joins us now. I want to get your take on all this. The Russians are coming. What do you think? Well, I think it's more likely that the Democrats are coming because we've already caught the Democrats rigging elections. And it's not just, you know, Obama... It's not just a conspiracy theory. According to Obama, he's never even heard of it. I mean, these things are so elusive and so rare, he's never even heard of rigged elections. But actually, we have Barack Obama, who was tied to ACORN. Now, we have dozens of these cases, Darren, okay? But I picked out a couple of my favorites here. Um, over 3,000 fraudulent voter registrations were filed by ACORN in St. Louis, my hometown. Mm -hmm. In Pennsylvania, officials threw out almost 60,000 voter registrations that were filed by ACORN. 
And then in Texas, almost 10,000 acorn submitted registrations were found invalid. So this is almost, you know, we're up around 70,000 um, fake ballots trying mm -hmm. to be cast by acorn. But Obama says he has no idea what a rigged election is. It goes on. Not just has a have acorn been caught trying to submit fake registrations. They've had employees be indicted. Four Acorn employees were indicted in Kansas City. Eight Acorn employees were indicted in St. Louis. You had uh, Nevada authorities indict uh, Acorn on 26 counts of voter registration. Sever seven Acorn workers in Pittsburgh. So it just goes on and on. So it's not the Russians are coming, Darren. It's that the Democrats are coming. And guess what? They're coming under a pseudonym you've heard of before. They, this, is just a, this is a joke to the Democrats. They don't even take this seriously. They tried to register Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, and the entire Cowboys starting lineup to vote in the 2008 presidential election. So I think it's the Democrats that are coming to rig this election, not the Russians. But isn't that the theme, though, Darren? It's the Russians' fault for everything. Well, it's the Russians' fault for everything. And I was going to tell you that, that my, my mom voted Republican her entire life until the day she died. And then she started voting Democrat. Well, that's you know? typical. But but let me tell you something. <laughs> hey, we know that the, that the Republicans are responsible for voter fraud in the past, too, especially now that the voting, the, the, the electronic voting systems are in place. It is just a recipe for disaster. So the, the elections can be thrown any direction, any way the establishment wants them to. I think it's very alarming to hear all this rhetoric about the the Russians possibly stealing the election because if if Donald Trump were to win they can always say hey it was rigged man and we can't allow this and then what's going to happen Well and that's probably what they're going to say mm -hmm. and we already see the UN taking over the internet we already see DHS saying they want to watch the elections this to me has signs of False flag cybersecurity terror attack written all over it. They blame Trump winning on the Russians hacking the election, and then the UN and whatever federal bureaucracy they want comes in, takes complete control over the internet, and you know what they'll do next? They're going to try to shut us down, they're going to try to shut Drudge Report down, and they're going to try to shut you down. You won't be allowed to operate because you, your content is going to need to be censored. You know, oh, like YouTube just is demonetizing. That's just phase one, Darren. And they will say Donald Trump is a sore loser. Meanwhile, let's not forget what Joseph Stalin once said. The people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. I'm David Knight with Joe Biggs. And today we've had another Tesla fatal crash. Now, this one happened in near Amsterdam. Uh, this was a death by fire, but they say a crash was involved. And, of course, it brings up the question as to whether or not autopilot is involved. Tesla is saying there is no autopilot involved in this crash, Joe. But they said that about the other fatal crash, which, by the way, they didn't make it public for a couple of months. It was more than 60 days they kept that uh, private. And they were very active in the stock market. They now have a lawsuit, multi-million dollar lawsuit from a stockholder against them. They're being investigated by the SEC not just the transportation boards, okay? They're being investigated by the SEC, saying that they kept that quiet, that the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration also worked with them to keep it uh, uh, secret. We'll call that uh, NHTSA. That's how we'll refer to them from here on out. But, of course, this is uh, a large number of aspects to this. There's the electric battery aspect of it. There's the autopilot aspect of it. And there's the crony capital aspect of it that we have involved here. But the first thing that both of us look at when we see this is Michael Hastings, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, we saw what happened with Michael Hastings. I mean, he the way he was driving that night was completely and totally out of the ordinary. This vehicle was speeding down the road. You see it flash, then flash again, explode. And here you are, this, the front of the car it's completely demolished, burnt, only the back end pretty much left intact, just like what we saw outside of the Netherlands. This man died with his autopilot electric car collided when it hit a tree and burst into flames. The firefighters took hours to remove the body from the Tesla over fears they could be electrocuted, like you said. So mm -hmm. you've got this autopilot fear and you've got this uh, electronic fear of being electro electrocuted, so forth and so on. And, and before we get away from Michael Hastings, again, at, when we said that, Everybody said, oh, you're conspiracy yeah, theorists. Exactly. Nobody could take over his car and make it go really fast. Nobody could blow his car up. And yet the engine was ejected down the road, mm -hmm. not captured. It was a frontal collision into some trees. 
which would have pushed the engine into and, the car, and, and yet the engine flew 100 feet or whatever it was down the highway in the direction that he was going. Mm -hmm. His car went in there, and there was no uh, involvement in the fuel tank in the back. And he had told people that he was concerned that his car was going to be hacked. Everybody said he drove like a granny. Yes, I mean, days time. prior, they... they they saw him looking under his car. His neighbor even confirmed that she had, she had seen him looking under the car. And at one time, Michael had even asked if he could borrow her car yes. to run some errands in. So there was yes. definitely some concern. You know, the more electronic we go with these vehicles, there's more of a chance that something like this is going to happen, whether it be hacking uh, or something like that. So that's definitely a cause for concern, something that people, buyers, need to look into. Uh, and that is future. a real concern because we've had now two years in a row, we've had hackers of the Black Hat Conference go in and show how they mm -hmm. can take over a car, they can speed it up, they can take over the steering, they can take over the brakes, they can do all the stuff that we said, hey, they're doing it. And of course, uh, Richard Clark said at the time, yeah, that can be done. He said that a little bit after that, and then after that we found out that there was real motivation uh, for people in the government to stop uh, Michael Hastings. So that's one aspect of it, yeah. is the hacking, the maliciousness of it. But let's talk about the subsystems and the other things that are concerned about this. Earlier in the week, we had an article on Infowars.com from Kit Daniels, and it was a quote from the National Traffic uh, Safety Board chief who said fully autonomous cars are very unlikely. He was speaking at, a, at MIT, and he says, I'm not confident that we will ever reach the point of fully autonomous cars. I don't see the ideal of complete automation coming anytime soon. Some people just like to drive. Some people don't trust the automation, so they're not going to want to drive. He said there's no software designer in the world that is ever going to be smart enough to anticipate all the potential circumstances that software is going to encounter. That's the issue. As an engineer, as a software designer, I understand that all they're doing is they're pushing human error. They say, we're going to eliminate deaths on the highway. Yeah. We're going to eliminate uh, human error. No, what they're going to do is move human error to another level. They're going to give government control over your movements to control and and track you. And that's the true issue. And if they're going to have autopilot, as, as a matter of fact, Tesla, has stopped calling it autopilot. Yeah. They're moving that back. They're getting away from that term. They said in this accident today that autopilot was not involved, but they said that for over a month after yeah. it finally became public, two months after it happened, they said autopilot was not involved. When the National Transport and when NHTSA did their investigation, they found that it was involved. And yes. so then uh, Tesla came back and said, well, it was the brakes that failed, not the autopilot software. So again, it keeps going around. But let's talk about this other aspect, and that is the danger of the batteries. Because just as we've seen laptops catch fire, just mm -hmm. as we've seen cell phones catch fire, we've had situations in the past where uh, Nissan Leafs have caught fire and burned entire houses down as they were charging. And just back in the middle of August, not in, in Amsterdam, not in the Netherlands, but in France, uh, somebody was taking a test drive in a Tesla in France. And what happened, they say the vehicle supposedly made a loud noise, sent a warning on the dashboard. There was a problem with the charging. There was an employee in the car with a person taking the test drive, said, pull this over. They got out very quickly and the car instantly caught fire. Before the fire department could get there, there was absolutely nothing left. It was incinerated. So that's another aspect of it. So you not only have the autopilot software, you also have the electric battery itself that's a danger. Well, Mobilize, the company that supplies the equipment for Tesla's autopilot, and they said that they're not gonna be working with Tesla in the future based off of these accidents that are starting to occur time and time again. So like you said, these oh. guys are gonna kind of pull back and say, you know what, this is gonna be a huge issue for us. We don't want any part of this. I think what, it, what we're seeing in these multiple accidents is an attitude from Tesla that we have seen for a long time from Silicon Valley. And that is they're going to put stuff out there. In many cases, they'll put uh, software that really isn't adequately tested. Yeah. And they'll let people uh, give them feedback. And that's how they'll uh, do the beta testing on this. That's fine if you're working with a situation where all that's going to happen is you're going to lose some data when it crashes. But you're inside this thing, and <laughs> when it crashes, you crash and die with it. That kind of attitude does not work. And, and when, you sign, when you turn on the autopilot, you uh, click and say, I understand that this is, in this is a beta test yeah. or whatever. Except that the people around you haven't signed on to that yes, beta exactly. test. I didn't sign on to the beta test with this. And you look at this other recent crash that happened, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago here in Texas? Uh, this was uh, a man who had his autopilot on, Mark uh, Molfan, and he said that he had done this route before. He was trusting autopilot. He reached into his glove compartment mm -hmm. to get something, and it struck a guard rail, and it did it multiple times. Times, okay, he said it actually sped uh, up yeah. after the first crash, and this is what he said. He said it gives you a false 
false sense of security. I'm not ready to be a test pilot. It missed the curve. It drove straight in the guardrail. The car didn't stop. It actually continued to accelerate after the first impact in the guardrail. I mean, one of the interesting things, too, to think about, though, is what if you're behind on child support or what if all of a sudden there's a warrant that comes down for your arrest? The government is the one that's building this software. These are the people that are going to have control of the back doors of these things. And that's what's dangerous about these electronic cars. Mm -hmm. The fact that these guys can go in, find your vehicle, they can track your movements, shut you down. If they don't yeah. like what you're saying, that's right. drive you off a cliff. That's so right. it's definitely something that people... In We've already had the government come in and say, hey, if you're behind in your taxes, you're not going to get out of the country. Exactly. Right? They're going to say, if you're, if you're uh, behind in payments to the IRS or what, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to be under house arrest, essentially. And that's what is so dangerous about it. And that uh, Joe, is why I believe the government is working so hard to make this happen. Yes. They want to work with the corporations because mm -hmm. it, it gives them control over your movements to be able to track you, to be able to tax you with all of your movements, and to be able to shut your movements completely down. That's one of the reasons why Tesla is involved, as, as uh, others have pointed out, as Eric Peter called him, uh, the uh, crony capitalist king, okay? Yeah. Uh, Elon Musk has gotten almost $5 billion in subsidies as a crony capitalist. And one of the things that he gets are CARB credits, the California Air Resources Board, okay? Uh, they give these uh, zero emission vehicle credits. Now, that is something that is a California program, but uh, it, what they do is they add uh, fees to regular cars when you buy those, yeah. and then they give those subsidies to Elon Musk. And he's very angry recently, demanding that those be raised. He wants a, more of a subsidy. What it amounts to is uh, not only crony capitalism, but we're now seeing the first uh, carbon uh, taxes yep. and carbon exchanges and that sort of thing. That really is what this amounts to. And this is the way it's going to break down. It's going to break down favoring some billionaires at the expense of the rest of us. Uh, saying that we're going to do this because these vehicles are electric. And again, we've seen now two fires, uh, most, most likely due to them being electric. And he said back in December, he and his uh, uh, executive, uh, uh, one of the executive officers of his company, that when the scandal broke with Volkswagen, they should be forced to make electric vehicles and banned from making diesel vehicles, yeah. even though diesels don't have any emissions the way that they're building them in uh, Europe now. Well, we're going to have more reports as this develops. I'm sure there's going to be more incidents with this. And I'm sure that there's no truth to the rumor that the car was heard shouting Autocar Akbar as it drove into the tree. For Infowars.com, I'm David Knight with Joe Biggs. Well, it turns out President Obama was watching the Commander-in-Chief Forum last night. He had some choice words for Donald Trump, some jabs, if you will. He called him wacky and uninformed. Now, this following the question posed to Trump, asking him if he thought Putin was a good leader. And he said, yes, he's certainly a better leader than the one we have. Of course, Trump is talking American jobs today, saying that the options that Americans have in terms of, of work, they're bad jobs out there. Now, our president, he's coming out of the G20 meeting in China, uh, the Asian summit. He was in Laos yesterday, repeatedly talking about how lazy Americans are, specifically using that word lazy. And uh, he goes on to say that Trump just isn't qualified to be president of the United States. Here's what the uh, president had to say about that. He said, I can tell you from the interactions I've had over the last eight or nine days with foreign leaders, that's serious business. You actually have to know what you're talking about. You actually have to do your homework. I'm paraphrasing here. You have to speak. It should actually reflect thought out policy you can implement. Well, policies, for example, like the ones he's implementing in bad trade deals, speaking of jobs here in this country, uh, he's ramming through the passage of the TPP, meeting with the Chinese, of course, during the Asian summit, and that's on his high priority list. Now, this fast tracking of this bad trade agreement, it's going to ax even more jobs, to which I'm sure he's just going to go around calling American workers lazy. Now, the average American worker last year, the median income was just under 29000 As I mentioned before, Trump has taken on the jobs issue today, um, doing a press conference and, and talking about the options that Americans have. Meanwhile, our own president is globally calling all of us lazy, uh, not mentioning those bad trade deals, though, that uh, strengthen developing countries and their workforce and keep ours in the poorhouse. I'm Margaret Halve reporting for Infowars.com.
Globalism already exists in the United States. Sprawled out behind me is 31,708 acres of the Balcones Canyonland Wildlife Preserve. The preserve is under the authorization of the 1973 Endangered Species Act, basically an extension of the United Nations Agenda 21. Even though Austin's population grows by 110 people every day, development of this prime acreage is not permitted. And furthermore, with the United Nations recent implementation of Agenda 2030, the globalist reach is finding its way into our very neighborhoods and lives. President Obama didn't go on a tour of Asia just to be consistently insulted for being a globalist pawn. Obama was attending the G20 in Hangzhou, China, signing away the fleeting remnants of the United States sovereignty over to the globalist 2030 agenda. Among the totalitarian horror this agenda includes are mandatory vaccinations worldwide under the guidance of Bill Gates, the unleashing of GMO technology on the natural world in the guise of feeding the hungry. I mean, genetically modified sounds Frankensteinish. Drought resistance sounds really something you want. Carbon taxes that will increase poverty and create a surf-like energy consumption. An introduction of a global tax that will make the IRS and the Federal Reserve look like child's play. And a global implementation of smart grid technology that will be beta tested in Africa under the $7 billion of U.S. taxpayer money Obama donated to the project titled Power Africa. The socialist tentacles of Agenda 2030 now reach right into our own backyards. As as Obama, in a last-ditch effort, aims to essentially transform America by giving the poorest of neighborhoods an equitable stake in the richest of neighborhoods. The Austin, Texas City Council is hiring, not electing, what will be known as the Chief Equity Officer. Seattle, Washington, and Portland, Oregon have already paved the way for this socialist enterprise. Three candidates are in contention for the position here in Austin, Texas. Austin Mayor Steve Adler wrote, similar to the sustainability office, which has a focus on the environment, i.e. Agenda 21, we should consider the creation of an equity office, have chief equity officer or propose an alternative that provides such a dedicated office. Such an office could advance racial and ethnic equity by looking at all the city does with a focus on equity, gathering equity data, and creating dashboards, advocating for and perhaps staffing the quality of life commissions. The work would focus Focus on tackling institutional barriers based on race and ethnicity and addressing those issues that interfere with access and equitable service delivery. In response, Austin City Council Member Ora Houston replied, Mayor, this is a great idea. Equity is a issue of class as well as ethnicity and or culture. So we are there building and, and drawing the maps and holding people accountable. I think equity means that we I guess denounce the sense of a system that was created for us and start looking at how do we build our own systems the way that works for the community that's screaming that we need equity. One of the um, things that we see as being really effective across the country is use of a racial equity tool. And what that means is that when decisions are being made, that we are considering race in the impacts. Whether the decision is actively perpetuating the status quo or working to change the status quo. The history of change in the United States is the history of organizing. And the reason why we have had change is because of community organizing, putting pressure on government. The main goal of the micromanagement of communities cloaked in the disguise of diversity is to eventually break communities down into sustainable megacities, a one-world system that will follow the implementation of the United Nations Strong Cities Network, replacing our local police forces, the watering down or complete elimination of the Second Amendment under the enforcement of Secretary of State John Kerry's signing of the Small Arms Treaty and an engineered global depression. United Nations manipulation of the human population has become a very stark reality. A reality you won't be hearing about from the mainstream media until it's too late. John Bound for Infowars.com.
Unfortunately, you've grown up hearing voices that incessantly warn of government as nothing more than some separate sinister entity that's at the root of all our problems. It's time to stop submitting to this tyranny. It's time to realize that we're being enslaved. Some of these same vo voices also do their best to gum up the works. They'll warn that tyranny is always lurking just around the corner. Tyranny with a capital T. You should reject these voices. Everything that's been done with torture, rendition, the NDAA, the Patriot Acts 1 and 2, from day one was focused on the American people, period. That's it. It's always been about erasing the Bill of Rights and Constitution and rolling out NSA spying publicly, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, rolling out torture, saying it's for Al-Qaeda, but it's really for the general public, rolling out total control and the end of any underground free market systems in the name of fighting Al-Qaeda, but really shutting down any type of free commerce. This is all about converting us from a free society to a tyranny with a capital T. Just when you thought Hillary's health couldn't have any more angles, what with the demon throat lozenges, her incessant hacking, the stools that she needs to prop her up, and of course the concussion-induced recklessness that put the country's national security at risk. Well, InfoWars reporter Millie Weaver was on the ground there at Hillary Clinton's rally in Cleveland, Ohio earlier this week, and she got a good glimpse of Hillary's motorcade. And of course, that includes an ambulance. Millie Weaver joins us now. Welcome, Millie. So now you first reported on this story. You got the scoop and you were immediately attacked by Raw Story, who says you can debunk this in 30 seconds because all presidential motorcades have an ambulance. But, you know, the obvious point here, Hillary Clinton isn't the president. Did you see a, uh, an ambulance at Trump's rally today? Exactly. And yes, I actually went to Donald Trump's rally today and there was not an ambulance there. Hmm. There, he did not have any ambulance in his motorcade. So any type of, you know, argument that it was just, you know, oh, Hillary is going to have that because it's standard procedure. Well, that's not true. Um, maybe the president of the United States is going to have an ambulance in his motorcade, but Hillary is not the president of the United States. So it just goes to, you know, what uh, the media spinning lies and misinformation to try to get us off of that hot button that we're on. So, well, exactly. We, we, Watson's got an article out today, just how the Clinton campaign is really pushing for the media to blatantly cover up, lie, anything. They do not want to touch this Hillary's health. They think this could have the potential to derail her entire campaign. But now I want to get to what you tweeted back to Raw Story because you're like, look, I saw you guys and your hit piece on me and my reporting, but does every single uh, presidential candidate have a gurney? Hillary Clinton has a literal deathbed on wheels being rolled up to her tent to just catch her in case she drops dead at any minute. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it 
was, it was pretty crazy because I'm standing there waiting for Hillary to, you know, come out of her tent and the event was already running over an hour behind. So I had a feeling that something was wrong, that maybe she was sick or having some kind of type of an episode or something. And sure enough, I turn right around and, and there is a gurney and there's, you know, these EMS workers, but they are wearing what looks like bulletproof vests. And, you know, I was like, is this for Hillary Clinton? And sure enough, it was the same EMS workers that my video camera guy actually caught, you know, those people, you know, the ambulance that was part of her motorcade, you know, those guys came out of there and it seemed like they tried to wheel around as to, you know, not look too obvious going directly out of her tent or into her tent, but they were staged right behind stage. Right. Waiting in the event that maybe, you know, she might've had something happen or maybe she fainted or fell or, you know, we don't know what could have happened. Come on, Millie. I'm sure that the reason why they had the gurney there was for all of Hillary Clinton's fainting fans. You know, President Obama famously had many women fainting in his audiences, so I'm sure they're expecting the same type of response uh, with Her Majesty the Queen Demon, Hillary Clinton. Exactly, right? <laughs> and how she had that, like, diva tent all set up there with her and everything, you know, and everybody's waiting. When's she going to come out? When she, you know, she <laughs> ran an hour behind and everybody was like sitting out there in the blazing heat. You know, I felt like, man, maybe I might need this gurney soon, you know, but <laughs> it, and then when she came out, she just sounded so unbelievably awful. I was like, man, does she have pneumonia or something? I mean, it sounded really, really, she sounded so sick in person. Her voice sounded so weak. And I can see why they might have had that, you know, that gurney there for her because she she seemed like she might have just walked out of a the back of the ambulance onto the stage, you know. That's how sick she seemed. It was crazy. Yeah, and you were actually there periscoping that live in real time. So of course that forced the media to have to cover her coughing fit. They covered it as just a little frog in her throat. Uh, also, then they were immediately reporting how high the pollen count was in the area, not expecting the fact that everyone's going to go on the internet and go to the the allergen tracker, yeah. which shows you uh, the, the pollen count was actually pretty low that day. But you know what, Millie, the tent there, Hillary yeah. Clinton already said in her in the forum last night that she uses the tents to block off any Russian agents from hacking oh, into yeah. her mobile devices. <laughs> so that's why that's that's her you know, just making sure she doesn't put the country's national security at risk there with the diva tent. So you, oh, were, yeah. you were at the Trump rally today. What happened? Well, it was a really great speak from Donald Trump. I mean, you know, his speech was amazing. He just was talking about how, you know, children and parents should have the right to choose schools for their children instead of kind of be, being locked into a certain neighborhood and how this can actually benefit you know, people in like minority communities and stuff like that. So it, that was really cool that he was talking about that. But he also did address a lot of the lies that Hillary Clinton, you know, spoke about in her debate. I guess if you could call it a debate, yeah, given that it wasn't really even a debate. It was, if, if any kind of debate it was, it was between, um, you know, Matt and Trump or Matt and Hillary, but. Right. Very so admirable. I saw that you were tweeting about uh, the press putting words in Trump's mouth before he even came out on stage. Yes, that was interesting. You know, I couldn't believe how unprofessional some of these mainstream media crews were in the media staging area. I mean, I think it was uh, CBS News, I'm pretty sure, but they had, you know, they had their guy, the reporter, and he had his cell phone ringer on and it just was really loud and his phone started ringing in the middle of the, you know, Donald Trump's speech. But worst of all, he picked up his phone and answered his phone and started talking on the phone and people were like, are you serious? And then he's all like pushing the keys on his phone. You can hear the beep, 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 beep. And they're, you know, they're arguing back and forth amongst each other on what, you know, what storylines you know, they're going to go with and what they're going to say Trump said. And, you know, they're already deciding what the story is going to be and what he said, 
you know, the way to spin it before they even, you know, hear him say or before anybody else. So it was just really crazy to see that unprofessional behavior from the mainstream media. But what do you expect, you know? Right. Well, they're just right out the gate. They're, it's there with the disrespect. Even uh, Matt Lauer, immediately before he even started questioning Donald Trump, he said, no, keep, keep the attacks to a minimum. So just kind of yeah. setting the stage for disrespect. I'm going to come and attack your integrity. So will we have some reports uh, coming out from the Trump rally from you tonight, Millie Weaver? Yes, we definitely will. Um, you're going to get to see Trump's motorcade and, you know, some of Trump's speech and everything like that. I mean, it's going to be pretty awesome. And I mean, like you said, I, I did think that that was a, a cheap shot for Matt Lauer to come out and say, hey, you know, you can't attack me. And he did exactly what he tried to say Trump was going to do so that, you know, he could try and say, act like Trump's being aggressive when he was the one being you know, overly badgering and aggressive toward Trump. So, um, yeah, but definitely check out the video, guys. And that's going to be up uh, probably as soon as possible, hopefully by, t by tonight. And, uh, yeah, thanks very much, guys. Well, thank you so much, Millie Weaver. You've been doing some awesome reporting from there on the ground. And we will have you back on the show really soon. Thank you. Thanks. All right, folks, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return, Lord willing, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock p.m. Central. Until then, have a blessed night. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. See you.